welcome to another exciting edition of Johnny's Interactive with me, Benis Abubeda. Today is a Thursday, definitely we'll be doing our throwback. We are finding out from you what teacher had the weirdest nickname in your high school and, you know, what caused him or her to get that name. We'll also be talking about electricity tariffs. Uh, the energy minister says you'll be seeing the reflection or you'll be witnessing reduction in tariffs next year. You've been sharing your comments with us. And today is the right to know day. Remember, we almost, we almost passed that bill, uh, the right to information bill during the last parliament. It couldn't happen. And it's been topical uh, prior to the elections, after the elections and all that. So we'll be talking about that right here. Get interactive with us on Facebook. Our name is Joy News on TV. Let's start off with your comments on the right to information bill, or as it is, the right to know day. Today, Joy News, in conjunction with Star Ghana, uh, is bringing you a program at 2 p.m. later. And uh, the question we are asking is, public information in Ghana, a myth or a reality? And a lot of you have been responding to that particular question or adding your voice to the debate on our Facebook page. And uh, we'll be picking your comments uh, shortly on that. And Al Hassan Jambedu says most public office holders become notoriously um, impudent after assuming office and become ridiculously holy upon leaving office. They reluctantly sanction the RTI while in power. Access to information still remains a myth in Ghana. All right, Michael Asari says the RTI bill seems to be far from being assented into law. This is because most of our politicians pretend to be working around the clock uh, in getting it passed as, as soon as they assume office but end up deceiving the Ghanaian. Then during the campaign period, they claim to be ready to, to pass it into law once it's presented to them, all in a bid to win votes. He says, for as for the RTI, it would take a very resolute and incorruptible leader for it to be passed into law. Bayer Jeremiah says, even though no matter what the RTI bill will be passed, uh, okay, you're saying no matter what, the RTI bill will be passed, but it will not yield the intended results. I'm just wondering why he thinks so. Let's pick more on what he's saying. He says the most important thing is taking actions after you get the information, which is a major problem. You get the information and the next thing is politicization of it. For now, he says, well, the RTI bill passage is a myth. All right. And um, judicious Odro Eric says this is what most of us have have been waiting for, and I don't think it's a myth because passing the RTI bill will help and improve our democracy and also expose politicians. And James Abusanga says, for now, he thinks it's a myth. It's not a reality. He doesn't feel it as a citizen. And uh, he says that because politicians will always cover up their dirty works. Nat Ofei Dodu says, I think the RTI uh, the right to information bill, you mean, should be delayed so that the current government can brief, you mean, all right? Wema Day Mark Paradise says, access to information in Ghana is expensive and some of us only depend on grapevine. Richard Givenu says, as well as these politicians live, access to information in Ghana will forever remain a myth. And... Um, Mahama Aminu sighs and says, my brothers, let's forget about these politicians. And Michael Edu says, why is the RTI bill being delayed? Is that not what all this is about? He's asking. Emmanuel Entry says, we pray that it will serve its right purpose in the country. And okay, he's apologizing for his comments on Monday and yesterday. I'm not sure what he put there, but apology accepted, Emmanuel. Nasir Hassan Yayima says, well, it's just a myth. And Holly Sindande says, a good move, but he sighs. I don't know uh, whether the good move is the program that is being organized later today at 2 p.m. 
which will be discussing this subject even as we commemorate the right to know day, which is today. And uh, Nathaniel Abrabra sighs and says, no comment. So let's move away from that, but do make a date with here, uh, with us here on Joy News because we'll be bringing you that particular uh, forum happening. We're going to be discussing this issue. Is it a myth or a reality for you as an individual to have access to uh, information that should be within the public space? Let's move on to a very uh, interesting topic. I say interesting because in the build-up uh, to the 2016 elections you know there was a lot of talk about high electricity tariffs and how this particular government promised that if voted they will reduce the tariffs well the energy minister of Wachi Jaffe says you know what hold on a, a bit because we won't be seeing that in this year we'll be experiencing it in 2018 and uh, a lot of you are not happy about that because well yeah, you think the promise didn't come with a timeline but hey that's the minister he's telling us uh, that's what is going to happen but Nasir Hassan says commendable may come to pass inshallah Amin Leon says an increased fuel prices claiming <laughs> he's being sarcastic sarcastic the hurricane Musa caused it some other many Nigeria thinks this is good news and uh, Abanga John says you know this is just storytelling says time for analysis. Um, so what do you think? Are you enthused that, yeah, it may delay. I'm talking about the reduction in electricity ta tariffs, but you will still see that come 2018. That's according to the energy minister. Get onto our Facebook page, join News on TV, drop your comments there, and I'll be glad to share it with the rest of the world. We'll take a quick breather. When I come back, we'll be doing our throwback Thursday. Thanks for staying here on Johnny's Interactive with me, Benis Abu Bedu. It's now time for our Throwback Thursday. And guess what? Today we are asking you, who was that teacher in high school who was, you know, who had that weirdest nickname? And why did they get that nickname? It's, it's interesting. My first, the first comment on Facebook has got me thinking. Well, it's coming from Otingan Ponsa Enak. And he says that uh, he, they called one of their tutors in Sonkonsu. That's bed bugs because... They thought he looked like one. I'm just wondering, why would you give, <laughs> why would you call your teacher a bed bag? And how does a human being look like a bag? Anyway, Zaid Link says, nada. Oh, right, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in that, Zaid. And Lambon Abu Bakar says, Abwa Boni or Diabolo. Okay, of, I'm not sure what DA stands for, but it's supposed to be a school, DASHS of Finso. Uh, you, because he liked caning too much, he was called Abwa Boni or Diabolo. Kofi Ogusu Yeboa says, Anyang Kwanta. Okay, he's laughing, says he still doesn't even know why they call that teacher that. Michael Edu says, Kwekwan Nadu, because he went out of school every Wednesday night for known reasons. Hey, students are interesting. So if your teacher goes out every Wednesday night for a reason you don't know. You give him a nickname. What, what's that nickname again? Kwekuanajo. <laughs> so students are interested. Farouk Salifu says, uh, my mathematics teacher back at Kansek, um, as he described the style the lady stood during oh, dining or eating cho time, he was called Akimbo. <laughs> I remember him saying a lady is supposed to have a Coca-Cola bottle shape and not like a cocoa sack. Oh, really? So the teacher was called Hada Kimbo, and that's the reason. All right. Khalil Maestro says Koto was the name. He doesn't know why the teacher was given the name, but uh, that man could teach math. And Ellie Richard uh, Banson says Jampanaro of Tadi Technical. All right. Uh, Kasu Makafu Isika says Sodoko of Malco Girl. She sighs and says, This man. Hmm. Evelyn Senai Bear, come here, continue. All right. There are three replies to that. I, I just want to know if Evelyn comes to reply because she's been tagged in that comment um all right evelyn comes and she's laughing says tell the world about your man that's kasu uh makafui asking evelyn to do the rest of the job eugene omari wadier says i beg mine wasn't a teacher but a student called azang beme because oh uh, okay I'm, I'm not sure what this means but kojo safe says mr hinkra known as Okonko, almost every first year student of AFSTS heard that story from him during English lesson one day. He mistakenly said, 
palagraphing. Okay. <laughs> Kojo Darko says, Lawa Sekendi Khalid. I don't even remember how he got that name. Tabu Bride says, Fayol, uh, your BM tweeter, he was dope. All right. Faith in Shira Iwusi says, Tosi of K-I-S-T-S. -S. Uh, well, I don't know why they called him that, but it was funny. All right. I hope I mentioned it properly. Andrew Yakuhoma says, all right, uh, we'll skip that. Liz Benjamin says, mine is Sarkodia because you used to speak English like how Sarkodia raps. Uh, in fact, you not understand it. All right. So if you just join us here on Jay and I, we are doing our throwback Thursday. And today we are asking you the, the high school teacher with the weirdest nickname and how they got it. And really interesting comments so far. Uh, Banyere Eric says, Navasco police. He used to arrest stubborn students. Oh, really? And says, I remember one time at school, he caught some of our seniors uh, with an occultism padlock. All oh, right. So he was called Navasco Police. Uh, I'm sure the school is Navasco. Nano Usu Asai Champo says, Mapi. He, he wants the same mapping. All right. A commerce teacher. All right. And uh, Emmanuel Chachuakwa says, Mr. Ibu. And that was a commerce teacher. All Christian Methodist senior high school students can relate. <laughs> Esther Ashley Kui says, Ebe Pai, all right. Uh, that's what he's called up to date. You don't actually know his real name, even though you were close. That's serious. I mean, the teacher had a nickname and you didn't know his real name. Then his nickname became his name eventually then. Uh, James Asamoah says, uh, at was Osimpo. That was the most, uh, the teacher with the most weirdest nickname. Old and simple. Amos Benjamin, uh, you called one of your teachers Super Mario. Interesting. What does the Raphael says? Loudspeaker, Madame Hussein P. Madame T. S. T. S. Okay, Tito Awudome. Abdul Rahman says, Gentleman Grass Cutter. <laughs> what kind of nickname is that? And Prince Eugene Edu says, Kwekuo Chimpanzee, Kumasi High School, 2003. All right, Dr. Sijan says, From PSTS Gizo, my science teacher. And uh, Peace Amenume says, Eburuba. Okay, I, I just hope I'm pronouncing these names right. Eh? Pa Chikarito says, <laughs> too late to be Nikki. All right. And Ampo for Yalmenu says, Coco of a say to two senior high school. All right, interesting comments we have there. But hey, it's uh, Thursday. We are just livening things up here on Joy News Interactive. And those were responses to the question we put on our Facebook page Who was the teacher with the weirdest nickname? in your senior high school and why was he given or she given that name well let's move on and there's this video if you've been watching us a uh, joy news channel i mean you may have seen it but take a look at it I'm too hot to be in anybody's pocket if you put me in your breast pocket you might have breast cancer <laughs> you put me in your back pocket you might not be able to sit down ga mensa is not drivable well, that's the new chief uh, police officer for the Greater Accra region. And he visited our office here yesterday. And that was his interaction with one of my colleagues. He says he's unbribable. But a lot of you have been commenting on that. And no one for God knows really says, well said. This makes me remember COP Dampire, one of the best police officers. Nia Kwete Ai says, he might be right. May God Almighty strengthen him to be corruption free for a change. Bernard Kofi says, oh. I've heard this before, we've heard this before, and he thinks that police people are all compromised, and none is good. Doug Abye says, well said, these are people needed to run the public institutions. Dan Slymore, well, he thinks that, you know what, we've seen too many examples, and he doesn't believe this new chief uh, officer. Polly Bunaru laughs and, and thinks, I mean, it's that bad that someone would have to think that for for another police officer to officer to say that I'm incorruptible, then it means that he's not a police officer. I mean, unfortunately, that's what it has you know become. But hopefully, this one hopes to change the story. And uh, Jacob Gaibo Yauche says, and well, he doesn't believe in that. Kojo Amtundako actually has <laughs> um, a gift of somebody clapping their hands. He's actually impressed by what this particular man is saying. Well, fingers crossed, we'll wait to see, but he says, I am unbribable, and that's the new Greater Crowd Chief, 
uh, while he was speaking to a colleague of mine. This is Joy News Interactive. I'll be off for this edition of Joy News Interactive. My name is Benis Abubedu. I'll be back at 12. Good morning. See you then.